Hey folks, it's Pete Thorne. Welcome to my studio. If you guys out there know me, you know I'm a sometime touring sideman, I'm a sometime solo artist that has a couple albums out, and I also make a heck of a lot of guitar-related videos for YouTube. So one of the videos that I did recently was for a Boss MD200. That's a multi-modulation pedal. Does all kinds of stuff like flanging, chorus, phasing. And when I make videos like this, what I like to do is come up with a whole bunch of different parts and sounds using the pedal or the product, and then somehow put it all into a cohesive piece of music. Basically record a song with it and have the song be influenced a lot by the gear that I'm using. So for all these years that I've been making this style of video, I mean, going back to like 2007, I've been using Logic as my digital audio workstation. Earlier this year, Universal Audio came out with Luna, which is their new digital audio workstation. I've been a big fan of their gear for a long time. And I've got their Apollo interfaces here in my rack. Uh, I've got one of their 6176s, a mic pre and compressor here. That's going way back to 2005 or something that I got that. And I'm of course a big fan of their plugins. I actually even have a signature plugin with them. It's the Sir Brainworks Universal Audio Joint Collaboration, the PT100 amplifier plugin. They told me the other day that actually they think I'm the only guy with a signature UA plugin. So I was super honored and jazzed to hear that. But anyway, earlier this year they came out with a new digital audio workstation called Luna and I thought, I gotta give this a try. So I decided I would try and record the MD200 video using Luna, it would be an experiment. I was a little intimidated at first because like I said, I've used Logic for all these years and I knew there was gonna be a bit of a learning curve. But I was pleasantly surprised it wasn't too bad at all. I installed the software, got it loaded up, kind of played around for a few hours and before I knew it, I was finding it pretty comfortable to work in. The greatest thing about it is the sound. With built-in Neve summing and tape simulation on every channel, especially as a guitar player, I'm loving the tones that I can get out of this DAW. It just reminds me honestly of recording analog back in the old days when I first got started and of course you still got all the great advantages that digital recording provides. So of course I already made the video for the MD200 and it came out a while ago but I decided I would make this secondary video about the recording of the MD200 song uh, in Luna and I want to break down all the individual parts with kind of a focus on how I'm using Luna to create the song and how I mixed and all that. I'll talk about the guitar parts, how I got those tones, bass, drums, as well as keys. I'm even using some of the new Luna virtual instruments uh, I used the Moog to create a percussion track, and my friend Dennis, he's a songwriter and producer out on the East Coast, recorded a couple keyboard parts using a couple of the other instruments, so we're going to take a look at that too. So some of you guys have already heard the song from the Boss video, but I'm going to play it one more time right now, uh, just so you guys can check out the track that I came up with, and then we'll get to breaking down all the individual parts in the song. Okay, so let's start off by looking at drums in this tune. I use Superior Drummer a lot. That's a, a tune track program. It's awesome. I use Easy Drummer too as well, but I'm really using Superior these days uh, the majority of the time to come up with my program drums. So I created a uh, instrument track and pulled up Superior Drummer. And the first thing that I'll do is I'll tap in a groove. I'll have an idea of what kick and snare pattern that I want and I'll tap it into Superior Drummer. And this is what I tapped. So, so in other words, they, they give you the ability to just tap in on a kick and a snare drum on the actual drums. Like this. So I physically tap that in using the mouse. 
So what happens then is it's going to spit out a whole bunch of grooves that are similar or at least hopefully close to what you tapped in and say, here's a bunch, how about this? And the very first one that came up here was called Verse 3 Irish Knights and it sounds like this. Okay, I'm just using camera audio for this part, it's just easier so you can hear what I'm doing. Uh, and, and so basically that sounded good to me. I pulled that down into a thing in Superior called the Song Creator, and it spits out a whole bunch of intros, verses, pre-choruses, choruses, whole bunch of ideas, fills, and then I can easily drag these bits out onto the grid in Luna and make a drum part. Okay, so you see that reflected here. This is what I pulled in for the, this first drum part on this first drum track, Drums Part 1. And of course, if I want to get in here and edit any individual note velocities, I can easily do that or play around with the timing or add and delete notes all right in here. And the kit that I chose is the Andreas Estensen Experimental Electronic Kit called Scramble. Now, of course, in Superior, you got a whole mixer in there. Uh, you got compression and EQ and all kinds of stuff going on. I'll go in and just fine tune that stuff after I find a drum kit preset that I like. So let's take a listen to what this part sounds like. I don't remember doing a lot to the drums in the mix. That just sounded cool to me, it sounded right. One thing I did was I added a DBX160 compressor uh, on the strip, on the channel strip in Luna. So let's see what it sounds like without that. And now with it. Somewhere in the back of the, my mind, I think I was trying to mix 80s with the drum sound on Smashing Pumpkins 1979, at least for this first intro part. So that's why the hyper-compressed 160 thing that's kind of re reminiscent of that Smashing Pumpkins tune. Now, my demo songs don't follow any sort of necessarily logical song order sometimes. Uh, they're more about demonstrating the product. So I go from this 80s thing into a full-on kind of 1970s jammy univibe guitar solo thing. So I needed a different drum sound. So for this, I called up another track, uh, made another instrument track, another instance of Superior Drummer. And for this, I used the Collins kit. Obviously, you know, it's the roomy Collins kit style, styled after a Phil Collins style drum sound, I guess. And this is what the segue between those two parts sounds like. Now I mentioned I used the Moog to create a percussive sound. Um, I always loved in Prince's music how on beat four sometimes he'd have this kind of explosive electronic snare drum sound going on uh, and you know even on a track with like organic acoustic drums you'd have this electronic element and so I'm totally ripping that off here <laughs> and so I used a preset uh, from the the Moog presets called 80 snare layer and it was just perfect for that sound actually so here's what it sounds like by itself and then blended with the superior kit Now you can see I've got all the drums color-coded yellow down here, and uh, I'm gonna send them all out of bus. I always do this, so all the drums are grouped, and they're going out of group called, guess what, drums? And I'm actually using a uh, multi-band compressor on the bus to just keep the drums under control a bit. I found the kick drum in that first electronic kind of sounding part, it was quite loud, and rather than kind of mix the kick lower, what I used was the multi-band to kind of keep it pumped up in the mix, but just squash it down with the multi-band a little bit and keep it under control. So it's really only compressing stuff below 300 hertz or so. Now I use Steven Slate plugins as well quite a bit. Um, so I've got an instance of virtual mix rack up here on the bus and I'm using their FG401 compressor as well as just a little bit of EQ from their Neve style strip. And that just keeps the whole drum thing, especially when you're blending a bunch of different kits together and stuff like that in samples, it keeps it all a little bit more evened out. I got kind of like a medium attack on the compressor and I'm just getting like really like a few dB of gain reduction at the most on the peaks. Okay, so I just cut some bass, and to do the bass, I'm running straight into uh, my pedal board. Using a pedal compressor on my board, I'm coming out into the MD200 where I've got a chorus uh, set up. And then I'm using a, a GK Galleon Kruger uh, 800B bass amp sim 
uh, which is another great Brainworks amp sim. Uh, I love this thing, actually, and it's my go-to bass amp that I use for a sim when I want a real clean bass sound. If I'm adding distortion, or maybe if I'm using a fuzz or something, I might use it in front of this. But if I want a tubey kind of grind, I'm gonna use the B15 or maybe a SVT. But if I want a clean kind of 80s bass tone, which I was going for on this, obviously with the chorus and my uh, Warwick bass here, I'm gonna use the GK every time, and it's just got a really terrific sound. So I just got the bass on the second half of the tune, and for that I used uh, the B15 plug-in, which I absolutely love for super warm, earthy bass sounds. It just sounds fantastic, and I've been using it for a long time for that. I also used uh, a Pultec and boosted a bit of 60 hertz and a bit of 3K, and I used uh, the uh, LA-2A, of course, it's classic. I love that thing so much and on bass it's just wonderful. Set for usually around like when I'm tracking no more than say like 7 dB of gain reduction. It's the most natural compressor though uh, on bass guitar on many things but especially on bass guitar I find you don't really hear it working. It just sounds better <laughs> when you're getting about 7 dB of get blah, 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 7 dB of gain reduction at the most. Um, so I'll often use it just on the input strip in console and uh, it makes me sound like a better bass player than I am. Okay, so to record the first guitar part in the uh, in the track, what I did was run my guitar into my pedal board down on the floor here, which I'm just using for a compressor. Got a little bit of a pedal compressor going. Uh, I came out of the pedal board and then I'm hitting the boss using a uh, an overtone effect. It's similar to kind of like a pog. Gives you almost like an organ type effect and you can mix in like a low octave and then an upper octave and I'm mainly using it for uh, the, the lower octave and to kind of transpose the guitar down with some modulation and stuff. And I love the, the effect when it splits into stereo. So you heard that at the beginning. Now what I'm doing is I'm coming straight out stereo, two cables here you can see right into inputs one and two, the high Z inputs on my Apollo 8P. And uh, then up in, console here, I've got two instances of the PT100 plug-in uh, from Brainworks and UA, and they're set absolutely identical. They look a little different here because I've got the you know, speaker control panel and stuff like that open on one of them, but two instances set identical and then hard panned on two tracks, uh, and then I can you know get that great big wide stereo effect and if I would turn the effect off, which you actually heard me start without any effect on, you just heard me hit the low E string on the guitar and then I turned on the effect and you heard it go wide in stereo. If the effect's not on, it just sounds like one mono guitar right up the middle. <laughs> to do a lot using two of the UA guitar amp plugins on two channels set exactly the same hard panned and then split using an effect into stereo and you get this great big wide stereo image and a really lovely sound. I did a stereo DI part uh, so literally just into my pedal board compression into the MD200 and I used the CE1 style chorus uh, in the boss pedal, and then running straight into uh, inputs one and two once again. And this time I pulled up a couple instances of the API Vision plugin uh, on the input strip and used it to filter out some low end and also just compress. So I've got a compressor pedal and I'm also using the compressor in there for a real clean, chorus, super 80s kind of DI thing. <laughs> Okay.
Okay, so I just recorded two guitar parts um, using the chorus and flanger, just running into the front of my PT-15 amp out of the you know mono output out of the MD-200 pedal. And I'm using a clean channel on my amp with a compressor in front. And I'm running the amp into the aux, and then I'm using the aux for all the speaker simulation. A little bit of delay, a little bit of 1176 compressor. Quite a bit of the room mic mixed in, actually. I love the, by the way, the AC30, the Hunk and Silvers preset, whatever that was. Uh, and it was the, the 212 Vox kind of, you know, Alnico cab. And it just sounds great to me. Uh, so I'm using it right now. It looks like, actually, what I got going here, the 67 and the Ribbon 160 and Condenser 67 in mono, actually. Oh, okay. It just sounded good. I didn't even really look at it. Mixed in a bit of room mic and away I went. Anyways, that's what's going on right now, and I've got a guitar panned left that's got a chorus on it, and a guitar panned right that's got a flanger on it, but kind of, I dialed it in to sound more like a chorus, just like a really rich chorus, a la kind of Andy Summers or something. <laughs> One thing I would be remiss if I didn't mention is the ARM or accelerated real-time monitoring mode you can use for recording into Luna. When you turn that on and you play through uh, plugins on the input strip, you can track right into Luna with almost zero latency. I mean, I can't discern any latency. Uh, it's really amazing. So whatever you want to use, maybe you want to load up a guitar amp plug-in and add a delay or something like that and experience no latency, no problem with Luna. So for the final kind of vibey guitar solo in the uh, track, I used my old Strat and I used my PT-15 amplifier set to kind of a Marshall-y sort of crunch sound on channel two uh, and ran the MD-200 pedal in front. I wanted to show the univibe sound in the MD-200. It also actually has a, uh, a fuzz that you can turn on. You don't have to use it, but there's a, there's a sort of fuzz simulation in there. So I thought, well, I'll use the fuzz and get a kind of psychedelic sound. It sort of sounds fuzz face-ish or something. So I dialed that in added the fuzz to the crunch of the amp, and that is that sound. Now, uh, I used the aux on the speaker output of the PT-15. The setting that I used is kind of a, uh, it's a greenback 412 thick cab. I'm using the 57 aux off axis in the aux, and a uh, condenser 414 mic, uh, as well as stereo condenser mics, and I've got the, the mixed in at a you know, fairly high level there. Uh, room microphones for a bit of room sound. I love that on solos in the aux. Uh, I'm also adding some stereo delay, actually, in the aux for a little bit of echo and a little bit of uh, plate reverb as well. And then once again, it's just aux, uh, digital output, shows up as inputs, I think, 9 and 10 or something in the AP, and recorded that right to two tracks in Luna. <laughs> Hi, my name is Dennis Martin, producer based out of Brooklyn, New York. I'm also the founder of Trending Chaos, which is a music discovery platform, management company, and label. Pete asked me to give him a hand on this track with the keyboard part, so let me give you a quick tour of what I'm doing using Shape in Luna. Since Pete is using a boss modulation pedal on a lot of the guitar parts for this, I wanted to find something that fit in with that but didn't get in the way of all that movement. So I threw up a sawtooth lead to introduce the B section, added the great Luna ARP extension which gave it instant vibe and just rode the cutoff filter as the part went on. For the second track I was looking for an 80s polysynth type vibe. So I threw up another instance of shape, went through the presets and found Bless the Range which is like a retro brass polysynth that just fit perfectly. I added a little bit of Dimension D, my favorite plugin of all time, a little Galaxy Tape Echo for vibe, and then as an overdub, rode the cutoff filter to just add a little bit of subtle movement as the track went on.
So let's move on to the mix now, because this is where things get really interesting. The Sonics can really start to grab you, so to speak, when mixing, and you're like, whoa, once you get a handle on it, it's pretty cool. So I make sure that all my tracks are color-coded, makes it easier when mixing. So my drums are yellow over here, basses are pink, the uh, guitars are blue, keys are red, and the buses are all green, the master fader's orange. And I'll group everything. So I've got a group for bass, for keys, for drums, for guitars. Uh, you know, it just makes it so much easier then if you just want to bump the drum level at some point. You don't need to, you know, be lassoing eight faders and all that stuff. And I've also got a couple of ambience plugins going here. I've got the AMS reverb up with just a short, like, 1.6 uh, second decay time. I guess that's kind of medium, you know, room or something. Uh, and then I've got the Oceanway Studios plugin open. This is the most amazing plugin for getting authentic room sounds. It's so cool. It's really, really realistic. I, I hesitate to even call it a reverb because it's much more like a, an enveloper that just puts all the instruments in the same space. <laughs> Especially these days, like where we're all recording in our own rooms, you know, and everybody's just distant from one another. It's pretty amazing to uh, have a plug-in like this because you can just tie a mix together beautifully, just putting the guitars, the vocal, a little bit of drums in there, and it just pulls everything into the same kind of sonic space and makes everything just sound a little more cohesive. And I'll tend to blend in the medium microphones and sometimes the far microphones, but at a lesser extent. I don't ever really use the close ones that much. Sometimes I'll kick on the low cuts and the high cuts, and I've got that happening here. It just kind of makes it sound a little bit more, a little less obvious in the track. So this brings me to tape sim and summing. So I've got the tape sim on on every single track. And what I want to do right now is just because it's the most easiest way, the most blatant way that you're going to hear is, is if I turn off the Studer tape simulation on every single channel, I'm going to play that for you for a second, and then I'll turn it back on and you can listen. <laughs> So there it is. I mean, you can hear it with your own ears. It's just got this, how do you describe sound? But you know, there's like this warmth, pillowy thing to it that's just wonderful, a glue kind of effect while still staying punchy and all that stuff. And if anything, it just fattens things up. Softens transients. It's just overall better. Okay, so now let's do the same thing, but with the Neve summing. I'm gonna turn it all off on all my buses and uh, I'll play you that and then I'll turn it all back on and you're gonna hear that. Here we go. master bus now and then we'll wrap it up. I like to use a few specific plugins on my master bus usually. I always come back to the same ones it seems. Uh, number one, first in line, the Solid State Logic G bus mix compressor. It's just fantastic. Generally speaking, I'll set the attack at 10 milliseconds or 30 milliseconds, just depending. And I'm usually on auto as far as the release goes. Uh, I'm on a 2 to 1 ratio right now. Sometimes I'll go 4 to 1, but generally it's 2 to 1 or 4 to 1. And at most, I'm going to set it so that I get like 2 or 3 dB of gain reduction on the most extreme peaks. It's just got that great sonic glue for your mix. 
Also here, a terrific plugin from my friends at Waves. It's the Greg Wells Mix Centric plugin. It's one of their one knob plugins. It couldn't be simpler to use, but it does all kinds of magic. When you turn up that knob, it imprints Greg Wells Sonic DNA on your mix. No, it's I think it's doing multiband compression, EQ, all kinds of good stuff. And I always think my mix sounds better when I blend it in just a little bit. A little bit goes a long way. And last but not least, we've got the Brainworks Master Desk plugin. Love this plugin. Uh, they made a mastering plugin for dummies, basically. Uh, you can't make it sound bad. I mean, the tone controls have really gentle sweeps. And uh, it's got some great uh, compression as well as de-essing, limiting, of course. Simple way to add some stereo enhancement to your mix. It's just really bonehead simple to use. So I really like this plugin. I've been using it a lot. I bet you're saying to yourself right now, you're using three compressors on your master bus. That's true, but I, I set each one quite gentle, and so they're just kissing the mix. <laughs> and then you get this great cumulative effect, I find. Thank you so much for watching my video on recording the Boss MD200 demo video in Luna. This is my first time using it really to do a full project and I hope you guys were able to garner uh, from this video the great things about it that I have. With the Neve Summing and the Tape Sim on every channel, I'm just finding it really easy to mix in and really easy to get great cohesive sounds. The mixes all sound glued together and everything's coming back and sounding really good to me without being harsh. Clear and punchy but not harsh. Check it out further at the links down in the video description below. You can click there, it'll take you to the Universal Audio website. You'll find all the information there you could ever possibly want to know about Luna. And of course there's info there about a bunch of the great plugins that I mentioned in this video from you as well. Please hit subscribe if you haven't. Hit the little bell beside the subscribe and then you'll get an alert every time I put out a new video. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys again real soon. Pete Thorne, over and out.